Hey everybody, welcome back to Retro Tech. Today I want to talk a little bit about screen calibration for CRTs, really any CRT in general, not just professional video monitors. I've got a new tool here in my shop that I recently picked up. It's an Extron Video Test Generator. This one is the VTG300R. It will produce different types of analog video signals and has multiple types of video outputs as well as different types of video test patterns and an output range. Today I want to go through this in a little bit more detail, show you some of the features on this, just in case you ever come across one of these and are considering picking it up to work on CRTs with. So let's just go ahead now, talk about the unit a little bit more, and we're going to get set up and start using it. All right, so here's your first close-up look at the Extron VTG300R. First, before I power it on, let's take a quick look at the front here, and you can see it's got a nice LCD screen that will help us through our operations and then light ups on each side to tell us which type of pattern we are using. We also have some output range options and an easy way to scroll through items and select up and down. If you look at the top this is where our video patterns will be generated from and what we can use to connect to our monitor. We've got RGB and that can be switchable between RGB and of course component. We've also got S-Video and a composite output. If we look at the bottom, we have our audio options, which include a regular standard mono audio out. Now this is a, not a stereo audio out, it's a dual mono. And then we've got this style of plug, which I don't use, but that's another audio type. But it's a pretty heavy duty unit. It does have an extra rubber uh, sleeve to protect it. Let's just look through some of the stuff on the side here. This is the power input. Now this model does offer a rechargeable battery. This particular unit does not have a battery that will recharge, so it has to be powered on the whole time. If it does charge, you'll get an LED status in here. All right, let's go ahead and power this thing on first, and then we'll get ready to hook it up to a couple monitors. There we go. So there obviously is firmware that can be updated. I did not find much information in the manual about firmware updates. And if you do have any information about the firmware updates, please leave them in the comments. That way, if anybody wants to use this device and you know any information about it, that may be helpful. I've obviously got our video test patterns over here and what our output range is down here selects. The video screen will tell us what kind of signal we're outputting from our outputs up top. And then we do have some options to push for range as far as what we can uh, output. And we've got these audio tests that we'll demo here in a minute, but first we're gonna run through some of these video tests and let's go ahead and start hooking this up to the monitor. I've got the device hooked up to my first monitor here, which is a JVC-TMH150CG model. Now this particular model does not offer uh, support for video signals over 480i. It only does 240p and 480i. All right, to start things off, we've got a composite video uh, output line going into our CRT monitor. And then we've got the video set up for video output. It's in NTSC format, and that's pretty much all you have to do to get the settings started on uh, to get your pat test pattern generated. Now, the first pattern we see here is our X hatch pattern. And I'm just going to scroll through these patterns. It's real easy. You press the test patterns button, and the second one is the H pattern, which is kind of funny, but it's all just tiny little capital H's that you could see on the screen right there. If I press it again, it pulls up color bars, uh, so you could check your color. And then we've got some grayscale, and then we've got alternate multi. So that's a little bit of a weird, just lines of grayscale again. And then finally a white field, and there are some changes we can do on that white field if we want to. All right, so if I go to the white field selector, I can change it to 80% or 20%, which just makes it a couple of different options on the white field. All right, so standard with this model, that's all you get for video test patterns to begin with, is the H pattern, the hatch pattern, color bars, grayscale, this multi uh, mix of lines and gray patterns, and then a white field. Next I'll be switching over to S-Video. Let's see how that looks on here. And it's just going to have an increased sharpness, very little. Uh, the other problem here is I'm not getting a 240p signal. I'm only getting a 480i flickering signal, but it is a tiny bit sharper using the S-Video as opposed to composite, of course. 
Let's take a real quick listen to these audio test patterns. So I'm just going to plug this into the bottom, and you already see I get a fuzzy noise uh, test. And we've got a lower white noise test. You've got a, it's called sign, but it's just a monotone little beep. And then a, this is again a real high frequency noise you may not be able to hear on camera. It's called polarity. Just kind of like a ticking. And we've got a sweeping noise that goes up and down. Again, you've got a audio level controls in here that you can make adjustments to. And I want everybody to know that there's a full manual for this device. I'm going to link to that below. But um, just some different, again, audio test patterns that will come out of all these audio outputs on the bottom in case you want to test your speakers. Unfortunately, I won't be able to hook this up through RGB or component uh, to this monitor. It will not accept, or this will not put out a 15 kilohertz signal. So it's a big drawback for this item in case you're considering this for uh, any kind of calibration. All right, so obviously I've got it hooked up to my RGB here and I'm having a whole heck of a lot more trouble than I thought just trying to get it to sync up. As a matter of fact, I've not had any luck trying to get it to even sync. Uh, there's so many different video options on this uh, device, but none of them are that great of a standard signal, at least not for even a uh, multi-format RGB monitor. And again, I just can't get any of these to come up correctly. It looks like uh, we're not even uh, positive. Now, it could be a possibly a problem with this overall device, but again, you can see it's not... It's just not that great of an option for us to use while we're going to try to um, calibrate something. It's not as compatible, and this is a problem with a lot of Extron devices. You try to get one, you think maybe it'll do something, but it just doesn't put out the right video format for these monitors. All right, so you can probably guess that I'm going to give this thing a pretty lousy grade for at least the applications that we want to use for it. Again, it did pique my interest because it's a video and audio test generator. It had analog video outputs, but just like every other Extron device that came out during this time period, uh, you have to always check what it will output through the RGB connection because a lot of them will not go below 31, 30 kilohertz of a signal. And even, like I said, with a nicer um, multi-format monitor, I was still having trouble trying to even get that pattern to pull up. I never ultimately got it to pull up on the PVM using that. RGB output. I of course could easily with S-Video and Composite, but that's not that great for a calibration tool if it just does that. That's probably the first and biggest problem with it. The other problems are is the test patterns. The ones loaded on here are okay, but honestly, why is there no linearity test? That is a huge problem for me that you don't have any kind of circle option on here to pull up. And what I mean by that is if you go into the linearity test on, for example, the 240p test suite, you get those nice big round circles and you can see uh, whether your screen has any linearity issues and that's not really that possible with something like this. Alright, so this tool did cost me about $160-$70 to get shipped to me but um, thankfully I did get a return policy and I'm going to be sending it back because it's just not what I'm looking for. And honestly, if you're looking for a video test generator and you are using a Sony PVM or some type of monitor that only goes and or that some type of monitor that you're concerned with using 240p the best thing you can use is the 240p test suite and for honestly probably less than half the price of this you may be able to get a used ROM cart and throw the software on there for something like a Sega Genesis and that way you'll have a good RGB test pattern through 240p that has everything you need in one simple spot and was designed specifically for retro games and 240p monitors so again, a big no-no on this. If you're thinking about it, I'd just steer clear of it. It's expensive. It's a kind of a fun tool, but I mean, overall, it's pretty worthless. So I'm going to send it back. If anybody else had a different experience with it, maybe had some kind of different firmware or had uh, was able to get it to hook up to um, a PVM using this RGB output, please leave some comments below and let me know how you did that. Uh, but otherwise, again, I'm just giving this a big stinker for a review. Thanks again for watching today. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please leave a like below, and I'll see you next time with some more retro content.